Hello, welcome to Tormented Souls. I forgot where I was going. We went through the library, went through the dining hall. Oh yes, I gotta go to the... I don't have the floor plans for that. We gotta go to the west. West second floor. Which will be in this general direction. Oh, okay, that's the locked door. Yes, okay. I remember from when I already played this. Yeah. No enemies around, which is good. Another logbook. The West Wing's second floor fuse has blown again, and I've run out of spares. These things are giving me a headache. All it needs to do is pass electricity through. I'm sure I can find something conductive to do the job in the meantime. That screw that the father gave me shall work. But this is another puzzle. It's not as simple as putting the screw in. Because there's another locked door in the other hallway. Also, there's guys around the corner, so I'm gonna take this and get ready. There we go. We're in the West Wing Corridor. All the stuff... On the left, room 2A and stuff, is where I would get the... A flashlight, and... A really good weapon. But so much farther into the game. Come up these stairs for me. <laughs> Stay down! Boom! Right Run away, he's up. Seems like they added, I don't know if it was intentional, but it seems like they added some inv invincibility frames on these guys. Because before you can just keep going, when they, even when they're screaming. Not anymore. Uh, room 2E. A save room. Another journal. Maintenance log. Ah, yes, the puzzle for the, or the hint for the puzzle. November 30th, 1030. Dr. Colin reported that no matter how many times he pressed the button to call the elevator, it didn't work. When I checked on it, I realized that someone had left an object blocking the elevator doors, stopping them from closing completely. January 20th, 19, or 1960, wow, 1600. The buttons on the call the elevator from the basement and the first floor aren't working. The elevator can only be called from the second floor. I had to sneeze there. Nobody's fixed it yet. <gasps> First med kit. Don't really have to use those. Some shotgun ammo, and there's a lot of dead bodies in the floor for some reason. Also, no, no mention that the that there's a bed sitting on the wall either. That's just normal here. Have to go foul smell emanates from the body. You gotta go down to the first floor. I cannot see that control panel. And then the puzzle.
from outside the box thinking is to jam the elevator. Prevent the door from shutting since it cannot be called from down here. I'm going to run all the way back around. And take the screw. Please take your ticket. Flip off. Take the hot screw. She's got leather gloves, it's fine. They're fingerless, but hey, they're fine. back to the chapel. Top floor. And by top floor, I mean second floor. It's only a two-story house, apparently. That's fine. It makes it easier to navigate. And then, now, can just open you up and stick you in here. Flip you on, and both doors are active. Conveniently. Where did this take me again? Uh, the operating room. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, get that nail gun out. He's already spotted me. Fighting in a... I'll take that. Small room. Not good. Not good at all. Also, a new enemy introduction. Two new enemy in introductions. A newspaper article dated July 30th, 1967. Fire interview news. Thank you for allowing us to interview you, Dr. Betram Wildberger. We are very aware that this is a particularly delicate time for you and the people of Winter Lake. Do you have any information about how the fire began? Experts are working hard to find the answer. Unfortunately, we are still waiting to discover the cause. What will happen now that the hospital is completely lost? A director of the hospital and as someone, or oh, as director of the hospital and as someone grateful for everything life has given me, I am currently working on accommodating the hospital's needs within my mansion. This, of course, will be temporary, at least until the new man, until we manage to construct a new hospital building. I have also spoken to kind donators who will be providing equipment and furniture. How generous of you, Director. I am merely God's servant. I exist to do his will. I didn't like those last words. But he's doing nice stuff. <gasps> Boom! Shotgun! Uh, looking shotgun, but it's a shotgun. Only one bullet at a time. And how'd you get here before me? Again. A man in a radioactive suit is walking around a body in circles. Who are you trying to revive? Father, what's going on here? Why is that weird man walking around the operating table with that weird chandelier in his hands? 
What are you talking about, child? I don't see anything. You don't see the man on the other side of the glass? Come on, child. This place is giving you hallucinations. You must rest. I don't know what's real or what is a product of my imagination, Father. Let me tell you a story. Hundreds of years ago, this island was inhabited by a tribe. One night, the moon could not be seen in the night sky, and the world was plunged into darkness. The shaman of the tribe, those with special blood, danced around their dead, willing their bodies to rise and walk the earth once more. That sounds terrifying. Thanks for the hint. We got a visual hint in a... Uh, I don't know where the word. Spoken hint. So now... Yeah, the glowing's a little glitch out here. Um... Okay, I want to go this way past the trap. Also, I'm just going to equip the shotgun because new enemy type. Hello! <laughs> Bitch. Second first aid kit. Uh, never mind. Alright, more of William's journals. Just leaving them all around. Thanks, though. Uh, November 15th, 1980. Maria is infected with a rare disease. My two girls are missing, and my father has died. Upon my return from the, from the business trip, I found the mansion surrounded by police. The officer in charge, without qualm, destroyed my entire world with his cold words. Afterward, they attacked me with annoying questions and did not let me see Maria until they were finished. She appears dead in life. Her skin, burnt by what seems to be radiation, is falling apart. Her physonomy, physon whatever, has changed quickly into something ominous. Her eyes do not show their pupils, and the only sounds that come from her mouth are feral screams. She was tied to a hospital bed, hand and foot, after attacking two of the nurses. One was left with severe injuries. She does not recognize anyone, not even me. The most potent sedatives we administer do nothing to calm her. I know not what they did to her, but I will not stop until I find the cure that, and those responsible for this evil act. For those for this evil act are punished. June 22, 1981. We have searched the closest forest and coast for more than six months, but have not found a thing. Not even a tear of clothing. The authorities told me there's no point to keep, the, keep on looking for them. It hurts to think that they might be right. Maria remains in a mental state that I cannot describe. I have never seen anything like it before. This goes beyond any illness. It more closely resembles a demonic curse. I still hold on to hope that Maria is somewhere inside the decaying being. Sometimes my doubts creep in and I want to cut her throat to stop suffering, but something inside me cannot let her go. I need to find the cure. I'll take this shotgun ammo, thank you. Microscopes and various medical items. Let me take a drink. Alrighty. To anesthesia. There should be a dude in here. Tis mute legends about. No, I'm in the wrong room. This is where I'm supposed to go. I mean, I gotta backtrack real quick. Uh, Tis mute legends around the magical blood that courses through the veins of twins, allowing them to communicate with each other by thought alone. Some even claim that brothers and sisters could appear next to each other in seconds across incredible distances. 
It is not surprising that the first explorers to arrive on the island called such gilded younglings witch children. Unfortunately, they seldom arrived 10 or 11 summers once chosen for sacrifice. However, the most striking tale is that of the nights when no moon was in the sky, the nights when the little twins would be sacrificed. The children would dance, touch torch in hand around the tribe's deceased while remaining trans while remaining tribesmen extinguished with their torches. With this ritual, the dead would walk the earth again, at least for one night. Alright, uh, this is the hallway I'm walking. Excuse me, pardon me, oh boy. Oh, shenanigans. Light me up. Give me that shotgun. This is probably a room I should... Ooh, he survived the shotgun. But this should have been a room I probably should have waited until I had the flashlight, but eh, whatever. I put the candle there for a reason. And now, the lock to the main hall. Some morphine. I dropped the caution. Of course I did. I'll take another one. I already broke their trophy anyway. Ah, William's journal again. June 21st, 1969. Maria insisted on having a huge celebration for our little girl's fifth birthday. Even my stubborn father joined us. It appears the girls have changed him in a good way. Everything would have been perfect if it were not for Noah, Maria's father. His cold stare m makes the girls uncomfortable, and the crude way he treats Maria makes me uncomfortable. If the old man thinks he can keep abusing my wife as he did when she was a child, or dares believe he can do the same thing with his granddaughters, he is mistaken. I will protect my wife and daughters from anyone who would seek to do them harm. Good for you. God damn it. I don't think there's anything else in this room. Okay. Now I want to go back and save, which... How many save points do I got? I got three. I am... in the dressing room. There is a save point in room 2E. So I will backtrack to there and save. Recording at 1080p is murder on hard drive space. Especially when my little solid state hard drive is tiny in terms of memory. Break on. Um. Uh. Fifty. This one. Nothing new to say. All right. Stopping this part here. Thanks for watching. 